Hello, my name is Dylan Jacobson, and I am currently majoring in secondary education. Um, I'm doing my educational giant uh, paper on Noah Webster. And just to kind of go over a little bit about Noah Webster, he was born October 16th in 1758. Um, some things that happened in his early life is that um, at the age of six, he was sent to a single room schoolhouse. Um, and uh, Noah Webster actually said that this was like one of the worst worst times of his life. He remembers it vividly, and he vowed after he left that school to <clears throat> that he would um, make education as easy as possible for, for those that came after him, that he'd do everything in his power to accomplish that. Um, at the age of 14, he was tutored by a local minister, um, and he learned a couple languages so that he could um, be more effective at Yale. Um, <clears throat> and at the age of 16, he attended Yale and wanted to study law there. Um, but his parents were farmers, and he wasn't able to afford the um, the degree of law. Um, some some things about his education life at Yale. Um, he actually saw General Washington um, as he passed through, um, and him and some of his classmates actually stood on the on the street there and heralded him as he as he rode by on his horse. And General Washington, as he went by. Um, was actually um, met by Noah Webster and his classmates. And Noah Webster actually played the flute for General Washington. Um, also, when he was at Yale, about the age of 17, him and his brothers wanted to fight the Battle of Saratoga, wanted to help the help the cause in the war that was going on. Well, when they got there, the war was already ended. Um, finally, he graduated from Yale, um, and like I said, he wanted to study law, but since his parents were poor, he wasn't able to. Um, so then eventually he moved the year late, a year after he graduated from Yale, and he moved to Litchfield where he began to study law. And um, as far as education goes, uh, Noah Webster remained educated for throughout his life. He believed that that was one of the most important things was to be educated. Um, Noah Webster did a lot of teaching in his life. He began teaching in uh, Hartford. Um, that's where he went right after he um, graduated from Yale. And he lived at the home that he'd actually grown up in. Um, he opened his school um, in Sharon, Connecticut, and um, taught kids there and was the founder of that. Um, also, after he had done that for a while, he visited the states and visited around the country and lectured um, to students to get support for his textbooks. Um, one of the problems at that time was that most of the textbooks um, were, still, were still British, so the people were still kind of divided over that because you had this new language kind of developing with all the English dialect going on, but people were still talking like the British. And so one of his main goals was to make it so that everybody was unified kind of in the same language, you know, the English language. Um, some of his publications uh, were the Blue-Backed Speller, and this is uh, one of those, his hottest selling uh, books that he published. It sold over 100 million copies um, by the end of the 19th century. Um, but he, during his lifetime, about 25 million copies were sold, and he earned less than a cent per copy sold in his lifetime. Um, also, he studied, because he studied law, he was able to produce a lot of uh, pamphlets and brochures and books about the sketches of American policy, um, kind of going over, you know, what makes a good government, how we can become more unified as a nation. He was very influential in that. Um, he founded the American Magazine, which talks about the Constitution and the new Constitution that was being discussed, um, history and education and good morals. That's something that's impressive about Noah Webster, is that he always cared about the morals, you know. Um, part of the blue back speller is that so children could learn. Um, the English language uh, from their teachers in an environment with good morals. And also, he was the founder of the Webster Dictionary. Um, in 1828, he um, produced a dictionary, this is the second one that he produced, that had 70,000 different languages, or 70,000 different words, not languages, and he earned, he learned 20 different languages, uh, traveled around the world learning uh, the languages so that he could effectively produce this in this dictionary. Um, some of his major achievements, like I just talked about, is the dictionary. Um, he actually had a major influence in the Constitution um, and centralized government because of his pamphlets. Uh, he was a lead vocalist for the Constitution, more unified government. government. Um, he supported uh, the abolition of slavery and um, common education, bringing people together uh, through education, unifying them through that. Um, <clears throat> Um, he penned the most prominent spelling and grammar books, um, like I talked about earlier, kind of the transition from uh, the British form of English into a more unified uh, form of English for the schools that were being taught. Um, some other facts about, about Noah Webster. 
is that he was the only one in his family to get past grammar school, um, which is kind of a big achievement. Um, he loved music and dancing. He wasn't just a serious guy all the time. He loved to have fun. Um, Noah Webster is also very outspoken. He was known for that. He wasn't elected to the Con Constitutional Convention, even though he had more than enough qualities to, because he criticized the Connecticut leaders a lot. Um, Noah Webster had eight children with his wife, um, six sons and two daughters, if I remember correctly. Um, regardless of all of his uh, uh, success, Noah was frequently in debt. Um, because, like I talked about, most of his publications didn't sell for a lot. Um, Noah was able to visit the White House for all of his uh, educational achievements. And eventually Noah died at the age of 85 in 1843. And I think that we can um, learn, or not, uh, learn a lot from Noah. Um, he was able to use education and what he knew to unite, and unite the country. And I believe that he was, he's visionary in that. Um, you know, he gave us the materials that we needed in order to learn and succeed. Also, he cared about those who were around him. You know, I liked how I talked about in the beginning that um, he wanted to make school easier um, for the children that came after him because it wasn't wasn't so easy for him at the, at the age of six. I think that's something that we can always try to do is make it easier for those who are around us. You know, share our information with those who are around us. Um, he also saw the greater good when it came to the government. He wanted to unify the nation. Um, and we can see that through his philosophies and his morals and his ideas. Um, also, no matter what circumstance we're in, we can always learn from Noah Webster that it doesn't matter, you know, as long as we have the dedication, the hard work, um, and the good study habits that we'll be able to um, achieve whatever we want to do. Um, anyways, that's all I got for Noah Webster. Um, thank you so much for watching.